This video is a walkthrough of steps 2 through 5 in assignment 0, which are all about getting set up to use GitHub for your COAST 217 assignments. This video is not mandatory to watch, but it will provide a, a nice step-by-step -step overview of getting set up for those of you who might like it. Alright, so let's go ahead and go to the assignment page. Over here on the Assignment 0 Introductory Survey Assignment page, Step 1 was creating a proper ArmLab configuration. That was uh, shown to you in Precept 1, and I hope that you've done that or will do that very soon. Step 2 says to create a proper GitHub setup, so that's what we're going to start with. In Step 2, we reference the Git and GitHub Primer document from the first precept, so let's go find that. On the Schedule page, under the first precept, we have the Git and GitHub Primer. Initially, we just have some introduction about what Git is, why we would use it, and some information about how it's used in the class. Step 1 describes installing Git, and it says to check, uh, I'm on a Mac, so to check, run a Git command and see if it's there. Mine is, so everything's good for me. I don't need to install it. If I did need to install it, the instructions are shown. Step 2 asks us to configure Git, and we only have to do this once, but it's a way to um, let Git know what our configuration is in terms of what metadata should be applied to each commit that we do throughout the semester. So let's go ahead and follow these commands. The first one is just what name should we associate with a commit um, or other action done through this git command on this machine. The minus minus global says apply this to all of the repositories that you'll use on this machine. We can set it on a per repository basis with minus minus local if we wanted to. The user email, just like the username associates a name, the user email associates an email. I'm using a, a, a plus alias. Many email servers provide this that say a plus sign and whatever text you'd like to give, which allows you to, in this case, um, use the same email that I, I already have a Git account for but uh, on GitHub. But also it's a way that you can track who's spamming you, for instance. The color says what color information should Git output as part of its output. Auto says that if it's writing to the terminal, it will output color metadata, color uh, codes is part of its output. And if it's writing to a file, it will not, because in a file you probably don't want to see the, the color markup. Various GitHub command, uh, sorry, various Git commands will require using an editor. For instance, if you want to commit, you have to have a, a message that goes with that commit. You could do a minus M on the command line, but sometimes you'll forget and it will pop up an editor. Similarly, merges and, and conflict resolution will require some editing, and so uh, they require an editor. I'm going to use Emacs, but you can use your choice. Once we've done these four commands, we can see what we did with git config minus l for list, and it sets the four things that we did plus the credential helper that just says how am I authenticating um, and that's set by my operating system. What this really did though was it created a file in my home directory called git config with this information. So that's the end of step two. Step three asks us to go and configure a, a GitHub account by actually creating an account with GitHub, the, the provider. This is a web service that, that manages Git repositories. And so right here on github.com, if you browse there, you'll see the modal comes up on the very front page that allows you to start a new account. So let's go ahead and do so. It will tell you if it's not available. For instance, I know that my account, my real account is actually there. So I'll use another one for demo purposes. I'll use the same email that I just used.
and I'll configure a password. I click sign up. And instead of having a capture or something like that, it has this quirky puzzle uh, verification. So it asked me to pick the spiral galaxy. I was not an astro major. I don't actually know what that means, but that looks like a nice spiral, so I'll choose that one. And it seems to be happy with that. I have no desire from them to spam me, and so now I will click join a free plan. It then asks for some biographical information. I happily will skip all of that and just click complete setup and it will let me do so. At this point it says verify your email address so I will go over and do that. Alright, so now I'm sitting here, my email was verified and now I can look and see my account. On the um, step three here, it says what do you want to do first, and it gives you the, um, the, the options, and then step four says how do you actually create a repository from there. So I could do that. I'm actually going to go through and use the instructions for the, um, later, the later repositories instead of just this first one where it's completely through uh, this what do you want to do first. I'll create a new repository using the plus icon up here. So let's create a new repository. I can choose the name of my choosing. Um, the, the name has to be unique to my account, but certainly many people in the world can have a repository called test or something like that. So this is our step four test. I'm going to choose private. Um, all of the repositories in this course are going to be private. For something like this, it doesn't really matter, but we want to get into the discipline of all of our repositories being private because when it comes time to, to have your account repositories, certainly those must be private to avoid revealing your solution to the world. I have some options. It will uh, automatically configure me with a readme file for my repository. It will let me choose what file names or file um, uh, patterns to ignore and never add to a Git repository. This is useful for things like never putting the tilde files that are Emacs backup files. And I can choose a license. But for now, let's skip all of that. We create the repository. And nicely enough, when you create a new repository, it tells you exactly what to do. Two things here. First, it gives you the, the link, which is the name of your repository. Um, technically, this .git is the metadata associated with your repository. And so this will come in handy for us later. But first, let's go ahead and follow the instructions to co create a new, co uh, new repository from the command line. So over here, let's create a directory that this will be our working copy of the repository. So we're going to create step four test. Doesn't actually have to be named the same thing, but it's convenient that it is. And the first thing that it says to do is create a readme file. This is useful because on the repository page, it will show you this readme. It's not strictly required, however, but let's go ahead and do so anyway. This is in Markdown, which is a, a markup language, um, cleverly named, I suppose. Um, markdown, markup. The, uh, so the, the hashtag here, the, the pound sign, will just make it big and bold. Right. Um, the key ingredient here is git init. What this does is it actually says, make this a git repository. So if you see what the, um, the message said, it made this directory. If I do minus LA, it will tell me that I now have that metadata, repos that metadata directory um, for all of the metadata about my repository. The next step here is I need to do a commit. What a commit is, is it says I've done some work and I want to bunch it together and say I'm done with it. I, I'm, I'm checking it in to say I'm done. Please save it for me right here on my local version. So this isn't interacting with the cloud on github.com. This is just in my repository here on my machine. So git commit. 
again, we can give the minus M command on the, um, the command line, but the reason why we configured the, the, the um, text editor is that if we omit that, it will actually pop up and say that everything is good. Now, right now, it actually says, there's nothing to commit because I missed one step here. I need to git add. So right now, if I do a git status, status just says, what's the status of the, of the repository? It tells me that I have no commits yet, but I have an untracked file. And it tells me the information that it says I need to add that file to start tracking it. So git add, read me. All right, um, so my previous commit didn't do anything because there was nothing to commit. Let's try again. Again, I don't um, have a minus M, so it pops up Emacs for me, and now I can type in a message. So this is checking in the readme. If I do a git status, it tells me that, um, that everything is clean. That means that there are no files there that are not tracked, but are appearing in this directory. So the next thing I want to do is I want to say I'm creating a branch. Um, if you look in this uh, later in this Git and GitHub Primer document, you'll learn about branches. But for now, you can just think of this as a, a track of work to do. Um, by default, master or main are the two standard names for, for branches. Um, and now the next command, this git remote add origin blah, this looks confusing, but all this is saying is I have a local working version right here. I want to hook it up. I want to say this is the local working version of that thing I created in the browser. So git remote add origin. And then this, um, this URL up here, or you can copy it from the entire command there, take your pick. And the last thing we do is um, we, we uh, said that we had a commit locally. Sorry, I, I naturally just type git status constantly to see my status. Um, we said that uh, we had a commit locally. We have not yet pushed it up into the cloud. So git push will actually say, take this local commit and put it up onto github.com into the cloud. And here it's visible by all users of this repository. Right now it's just me, but we'll see why this is useful in a moment. So let's complete that. Git push minus u origin master. Depending on your configuration, you might be able to just do git push. And it will prompt for your GitHub name, the one that I just created. And it will prompt for your password. It thinks about it, it says, hey, let's go ahead and upload it. It gives us the information. And now if we come back over to our repository out here in the cloud on the web, it actually has the information that, that we edited in our browser, uh, sorry, in our terminal. So that was how we could use this. Um, the, the next step over on the survey assignment was figuring out how we're going to get things onto ArmLab. So we said that our recommended workflow uses Git as our transfer. So let's see how we would do that. First, I'm just going to grab that information because it's going to be useful. So over here on ArmLab, I've already logged in. What I can do is I can do a Git clone. Clone says create for me a new copy, a new working copy of the repository. So what repository do I want to clone? I want to do a clone of this one. I again need to enter my information. And here, if I look at this, um, I see that I now have a step four test. It has all of the information here. So I have now staged my files onto ArmLab just via Git. On my local machine, I was able to upload them to the cloud, 
and then on ArmLab I'm able to download them from the cloud. This can go the other way as well. Let's say that we want to make a change, so um, here I'm going to do some editing and um, I'm going to produce a new file. If I do a git status, it tells me that I have an untracked file, so I can again do a git add. Add says start tracking this file. Git status will tell me that now I have a new file. It needs to be committed. And now that I've done a git commit, I can do I can do git status again to show what happens. It says I am now ahead of Origin Master by one commit. So that means that I have new information that has been committed on my current local working version that doesn't exist over on my actual machine. So how to get it back over there? Well, the same thing we just saw. We can push to the cloud. We do that, it succeeds. If we look over here on the web version, we can see that now we successfully did do that. Now over here on my, my own machine, how do I get that back? Well, I could clone an entire new repository, but that seems silly. We don't want to do that every single time. Instead, the pull command will say, go to the cloud and say, what updates are there? When I do that, it says, um, it, it downloads some objects, it does what's called a fast forward to go to the newest version, and it says that one file was changed, there were no insertions, no deletions, that's because I haven't changed any of the existing files, instead there's just a new file there that was in the create mode, that means I created a new file. I now have that new file here on ArmLab. I can now go back and forth and do that as much as I want with creating new files, removing files, editing files, and that will work perfectly in terms of a reasonable way to transfer files from, from your working environment, your own machine where you're doing your development, onto ArmLab for building and testing and submitting. So that was step four of assignment zero. Step five of assignment zero then is going to talk about um, how to do the assignments when we give you some code to start. So let's come back over to the Git and GitHub primer. Step five says um, mirroring or importing a GitHub repository. So mirroring or importing, depending on which term you use, really just means I want my own version of some other repository that already exists. I don't want to clone it. I don't want a working copy of their repository. I want my own repository that comes pre-populated with all of that repository's stuff. So let's see how to do that. I'll come over here and uh, start on my, my own machine again. Um, I'll back out of this directory because I don't actually want to do it in step four test. I want a new, a new repository. So there is a, a web tool for this. Um, it's very straightforward. You're welcome to use it, but it's very much GitHub specific. It's um, only going to work for you in GitHub. There is a more general way to mirror a, a repository in the way that we're talking about using just Git command line tools. So let's look at that. So the first thing that we do is we do a Git clone that says check out a new working, uh, working copy of a repository. But in this case, it's not one of my own repositories. It's a repository that Coast217 has created. But we don't want the entire repository. We just want the metadata because that's all we need to create our own version. So we are going to do this git clone minus minus bear command. A bear, com bear clone just takes the metadata, not all of the full file data. This is the repository for, um, for assignment zero, but each one of the COSA 217 assignments will have its own repository um, with all of the starter code that we give you, code and tools and data. So we're going to do this. It succeeds. What does it do? It says cloning into bare repository survey.git. 
So just like when we saw in step four test, we had a .git directory with all of our metadata, survey.git is all of the metadata from the survey repository. So let's take a look. It has a bunch of stuff. Um, what does it mean? Well, we can look. Branches, we said that branches were, were different lines of work and versions of the code. So it makes sense that they're stored somewhere. Info and objects. Objects is the actual code, probably. Lots of stuff there. The good thing is, you don't have to care about any of this. We'll go to the next step. The next step says, hey, we need a new repository of our own to use here. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll come back up here and in our account, give me a new new repository. We will do um, my survey or uh, the equivalent of my coast 217A0. Fine. Um, again, it should be private, especially now it's a, an assignment repository. I don't need any of this because anything I put here, I'm not going to actually use. All I want to do is have a landing spot to copy the, um, the existing Coast 217 repository into. So I'll create the repository. And now I, I, I have the name of it that I need. I can do my survey.git, that would be fine. Um, the .git means that it's a bare repository. The not.git means that it's the, the full repository. So it's just a matter of, am I talking about only the metadata or the full repository? Um, if you don't put the .git and you need it, the git command line client will fill it in for you. It will be fine. So let's go ahead and do this. Now that we've created the repository, I'm going to um, take the metadata that I've produced, this you know survey.git, and I'm going to, uh, I'm in the directory here, and like it says, it should cd into the metadata directory, I am. I'm in survey.git, and now I will do this git push command that is the mirror command. Turn the, the metadata, the, the bear clone that I've, um, that I've cloned out of the 217 repository, turn it into my new repository. All right. Once we've done so, we can check over here. Indeed, this has some information. It has a readme and conduct survey.c, which is the, the core C file for assignment zero. We're not quite done yet though, because right now we don't actually have a working copy. We have the one that we, the bear clone, the metadata that we did, we downloaded from 217, but we don't have our own working copy of our new my survey. So let's go ahead and get one. We get one with a git clone of my own, uh, my own new repository. And now I have a working copy. That's all there is to it. Um, now I can go through and do the exact same thing that I did before, where I will um, edit my files here. I can then commit them and push them, come back over to ArmLab, pull them, edit, uh, edit them on either side, eventually build them and run them on ArmLab. I hope this was helpful and uh, the step through the process made it a little bit clearer than just the documents. Good luck.